Well, hello there and welcome to the bathroom of the dollhouse where all the heavy thinking gets done for another reading and quasi-comprehensive commentary on The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Eust Elfers for January 29th, the day of the compassionate combatant. That's right. And here at the top of the page is a visual representational image of the day of the compassionate combatants. Well, we have us an image of... What could it be now if I get my hand on a book prop up? There we go. Boom. It's two trees. Now, I don't know if they're just the same breed or is it called a genus? I'm not quite sure. But maybe in various states of growth or perhaps two different trees all together. Uh, it could be an oak or a hickory. It may be a maple. I don't know. I'm not an arborist or a botanist, whatever particular field of study figuring out tree identification would be. But that being said, it's not altogether all too important in the scheme of things. No, what is important right here is it is January 29th and hence well, it's somebody's birthday ostensibly that's why you're here so if it's your birthday I just want to extend you a heartfelt happy birthday that's what's important so if you take nothing else from that video hey I just take that away all right happy birthday uh, that having been said a lot of times these videos find folks late so if that's the case I just want to say I hope you had a happy birthday uh, but for everyone else joining us randomly or to celebrate the birthday or you know maybe just to get your daily numbers I want to say hello welcome and I hope you enjoy yourself now as I mentioned daily numbers something I like to do around these here parts and that is Roll some dice. That's right. This is the Diecast birthday broadcast, so I like to live up to the namesake there. But I do so more importantly for synchronicity's sake. And here I rolled us a one and a two for a three. That's right. Your daily numbers. Now uh, you can skip ahead if that you just that's all you're here for. That's it. That being said, what are we getting daily numbers here for? Well, folks, as I've often heard it told. The universe will put things in our path to help us realize our goals or, uh, uh, you know, uh, realize or manifest our aspirations. But if we got blinders on, because we usually very narrow focus getting after our day, we might not be apt to see the signs the universe is trying to put down in our path. So this is an exercise to identify those signs with a sign we can't help but notice. At least that's the hope, right? That's right, your daily numbers. You're one and you two. Four, three. Now, that having been said, uh, how do you incorporate this into your life? Well, I'll just throw out some examples here for you that I like to do. Let's say you pick a spot and you're, uh, you find near, to your, near and dear to your heart or perhaps some place you haven't been before. Say downtown, right? You set off with your numbers. Maybe uh, raid your old Yahtzee set there. Now, you don't have to go with the numbers I rolled for you. Maybe pick your own if you want a more intimate, uh, you know, conversation with the universe there. But you can use the dice to ascribe directional values to number sets as well as time limits with which to go in those directions. But once you've established all those things, uh, you know what? Get those blinders off, like I said, and start soaking things up like a sponge because you never know the day might start to take on a theme and that might be how you start to recognize you're on the right path there. And, and all of this, you're kind of letting the universe take the wheel for you too, not just looking for signs. So once you find your spot, you take off from it, like I said, start soaking things up. Maybe you happen to see, I don't know, not just trees if we're going by the visual representational image because trees are everywhere, are they not? Unless you're in some uh, brusque city or as a brutalist style city architecture-wise. Everything's just a big block of concrete, I feel like. Maybe then seeing trees is a little bit of a novel notion. Uh, that said, maybe you see them in forms that aren't like uh, what you call tangible, no, tangible say, but maybe uh, not, not real trees. Maybe they're used as advertisements on bus benches or as murals on the side of buildings that you're passing by. There you go. I would take that as a sign you're on the right path. If that's something that starts creeping into your day. Uh, that said, maybe at the end of your first time value, you're not seeing anything that stands out. It's just the everyday goings on. Well, never fret. You know what? Maybe just take a moment to look around, see what's going on. Maybe you just so happen to notice something small, like you're on 3rd Avenue. That's right. Or 12th Avenue, whatever the case may be. Take that as a sign you're on the right path. Maybe around about that time, the city bus pulls up and it might just so happen to be, boom, the number 12 line or the number 3 bus. I don't know. Be a little judicious with this stuff, I suppose. But hey, maybe you don't like to ride the bus. You're like, I don't know. Things are just presenting too, uh, too randomly here. You know what? Maybe you just so happen to have perfect change in your pocket to ride. And you know what? I would say that's the perfect opportunity. But what's this? 
she was waiting too long to decide. The bus leaves. Oh, no. You know what? Maybe roll your dice for a time value to see how long to follow that bus for. All right? At least the direction. Take that much from it, okay? And then maybe around about this time, the end of your time limit, hey, maybe you just have to notice you're in front of a building with, I don't know, what's this? A 12 in the address. Well, you know what? Last time you missed an opportunity right in front of you because of indecision, so maybe take this opportunity to see what's in that building, right? Maybe you go up and it's locked. Oh, geez, it's locked. Oh, well, it was somebody's apartment complex. We don't need to be going in there anyhow. Brown, about the time you turn around, oh, what's this? Here's somebody standing here with some groceries. Can I help you? Do you live here? No, I don't. You know what? Just be open, transparent about what you're doing. Show them your dice. Show them this video. I'm just here because of synchronicity. And they're like, what are you talking about? Hey. You've got the tools to get yourself off the hook from looking weird or like a stalker, say. And then, uh, what's this? Maybe they find it kind of interesting. You're out there trying to do something novel, right? Maybe they put their groceries away and they're apt to join you. And you're like, it's kind of strange you're out here joining me here on this thing. And they're like, you know, well, it's my birthday too. And you're like, whoa, crazy. That's the synchronous. That's right. Or, you know, some of you might say coincidence. Hey, stack them up, right? Either way, I'd say a little bit of magic and you can't hope for anything else on your birthday it's a little bit of magic uh, and you know what's great about other people joining you on this regardless if it's if it's their birthday or not uh, it's been told to me that the universe also stacks up heavier manifestations or better results the more people that are focused on as much and even I think you get the idea so get on out there see taste touch smell intuit a little bit of magic and you'll understand why I brought it up. That's right. Stack up some synchronicity, some coincidences, and you'll understand. So that having been said, your daily numbers having been relayed, you two and you one for a, a three. Let's get on with the read. Your month is January. Your day is the 29th. Your sign is eight to 10 degrees Aquarius of the Aquarius one period specifically. And your quality and elements is fixed air. All right. January 29th, the day of the compassionate combatant. Those born on January 29 stand up and fight for what they believe in, uh, but only if necessary, all right? They have great faith in the ability of reason and human understanding to prevail in most situations and therefore attempt to work things out as best as they can. Generally speaking, January 29 people are provocative only so that others can recognize the issues at hand, examine and discuss them, and make their own decisions. They are rarely, if ever, dictatorial and do not enjoy imposing their ideas on people. Probably their greatest satisfaction is both living and working together with others in harmony as a team member. And for the most part, active and productive in daily life, January 29 people have a remarkably passive side underlying their nature, which on the upside makes them open and accepting of other points of view. The downside of this is that they often stall and put off crucial decisions and lose direction for periods of time. They are also capable of sticking with a profession they do not really like for years, rather than pushing themselves to find something better. And actually, they have a great need for security, which, no matter how radical or far out they seem, remains a, com a commanding presence in their lives. And the emotional lives of January 29 people are extremely complex because they are rarely satisfied with the status quo. For example, if they find security in a loving relationship, they may soon grow bored and desire to be free. And if they live alone, preferring their freedom, they long for the kind of personal happiness and family life they see others having. Creative people born on this day may yearn for years to be recognized, yet at the same time feel that commercialism can be the kiss of death to their unusual endeavors and stifling to their sense of fantasy and imagination. As mentioned before, January 29 people are generally accepting of many points of view. However, since they will rarely reject an opinion out of hand, or an option out of hand rather, without examining it first, they may have difficulties making 
lasting decisions. And their profound human understanding, one of their strongest talents in the final analysis, can foster ambivalent attitudes which become an obstacle to their success. Characteristically, though, these courageous individuals keep on going and battling with equal effort against their own underlying doubts and society's barriers. The key to their success usually lies in building a solid ego structure, tough enough to protect them and realistic enough to advance their aspirations. All right, I liked this particular breakdown. I would say it breaks with a, a typical through line here of the past uh, period, which was just seeing a very hyper diligent focus on the day's theme and not necessarily expanding very far from that. I would say they did that to some extent here, but it was very well rounded in the things that they explored. And, and some of these other days in this period, they just aren't necessarily doing that. So I appreciated that they really kind of explored this particular uh, dynamic going on for you. That having been said, I mentioned we like to provide a little bit of commentary around these here parts. So let's dive into some notes, see what I had to say about the day, and maybe make some connections with past days, etc. Or just what I found interesting. Uh, so we start off here with January 29th, the compassionate combatant. All right, you're someone who stands up and fights for your beliefs, all right? But only when necessary, the reading said, uh, which is interesting, all right? A notable facet to tack on to, to that, I would say. Uh, the reading also claims you have faith in thing, you have faith that things can be worked out based uh, essentially on an idea that people can come to their senses before things need to go another way for resolution. Uh, at least the way I read it. So to say, you know, before people need to start throwing fists around, I would, I would assume. Um, let's see here, what else did I say? Which I like to believe, even though uh, it, it kind of instances of people losing their cool or losing their minds, as I wrote, that tends to stand out more than people keeping their cool, I would say. Uh, so who's to know uh, how, how uh, well ingrained that dynamic really is? But I don't know, it's kind of interesting that you're somebody who doesn't jump to, uh, to raising their fists up, I would say. But back to you, you're said to be provocative, but only when it serves a purpose, and you're rarely dictatorial. Uh, also not of a desire to impose your ideas, and you get great satisfaction living and working in harmony with others as a team member. Uh, which extends to the idea that you have a passive side to your nature that allows the ideas of others to be considered. Uh, but this can lead to indecisiveness and inaction of a sort as well. Uh, which apparently, when coupled with a need for security, can take the form of uh, things like uh, sticking with a career you don't like instead of looking for another, uh, which must be quite the pressing need, uh, in need for security, I mean, uh, if, you're emo if you're emotionally never satisfied uh, with the status quo, so that security is pulling at you so much that this other pressing need of yours, you don't really lean into it. Very interesting. Uh, so this might extend to a uh, distinctly uh, different, oh, I'm sorry, here. it extends to riding fences, okay? Uh, so I completely understand to that extent. I do so myself quite a bit. Uh, and I, Because it's easier way forward, it would seem, to no decision at all. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but for those of us who ride the fence, it makes all the sense in the world. And so this dynamic then worms its way into other aspects of your life as well. With romance, they said you may be torn between desires of freedom and relationship and with creativity, uh, between uh, the commercial for money and recognition, uh, but at the cost of restriction or freedom or profitless anonymity. I don't know, each one's got its benefits, but also its cons. So there you find yourself, boom, on the fence. You can't decide which one. You can't decide whether to get on the bus or not, as and they did in the example. Uh, and what else did they have here? Also, in affecting uh, or in affecting or the uh, formation of opinions. All right. So ambivalence takes hold uh, if examination of something uh, you can't you can't lend credence to it without kind of uh, resolutely drilling down on it. There, I think I'm saying my my wording all right all wrong. Uh, in affecting the forming of opinions is also effective. To say ambivalence takes hold if examination of something 
uh, something's credence can't be resolutely drilled down upon. That's right, if you can't form a rock solid opinion on it, you're gonna stay on the fence about it. Whereas other people, even if it's not rock solid, boom, they're jumping to one side or the other. That's what I was trying to say. And I'm the kind of person that's like, man, if it's not rock solid, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna drill down on it. Sorry, I'm up on the fence, I stay. And so that's kind of the idea I'm getting here from the breakdown. So I totally appreciate it, but I see the flaw in it, all right? Uh, and I know such things all too well here, I just said that. And it wasn't even a part of my birthday. So it must be infinitely harder for you if it's mentioned as being something that's a big uh, aspect of your life. Uh, but the reading claims you keep going despite all this, battling your own doubts, all right? For the first really well-rounded well focus birthday breakdown in some time, like I said, or at least the illusion of one, uh, as many topics as they covered, uh, but in sticking with the theme, they still kind of did. So uh, that having been said, that's what I had to say about the breakdown. A little disjointed there in places because I, I didn't notice something as small as an S. That's right. The ledge. Just throwing some pluralism on there makes the context come together, surprisingly. Uh, that having been said, your birthday breakdown having been relayed, let's move on to your numbers and your planets. All right. Those ruled by, or those born rather on the 29th of the month are ruled by the number two, as two plus nine equals 11 and one plus one equals two. And by the moon, that's right. And those ruled by the number two often make good partners and co-workers rather than leaders, it says. And such qualities help January 29 people fit in as team players, but may also act as a break on individual initiative as well as action. And the moon's strongly reflective and passive tendencies underline the above-mentioned points. And a strong connection between the moon and Uranus, uh, the ruler of Aquarius, can lend independence and idealism, but also produce an emotionally erratic nature that finds it hard or impossible to settle down domestically. Interesting. Uh, this one is somewhat personalized, at least toward the tail end, for sure. Uh, but the rest of it, uh, I don't know, a copy-paste job, at least insofar as the moon was concerned, but it's dynamic with Uranus. That's a little bit specific, and I don't know that we've come into that before. That said, let's dive back into the notes. I might be getting ahead of myself on saying such things here. So the number two in the moon for a good worker-partner dynamic rather than a leader. And I would say more often than not, this dynamic doesn't really seem to apply or it's hard to kind of justify in the scheme of what was relayed in the breakdown. Uh, but based on the breakdown here today, uh, they say as much pretty directly, all right? And they also mention uh, reflective and passive natures. Uh, for maybe the most shining example I've come across of a Numbers and Planets Day essentially informing the breakdown. Uh, but the, the reading, uh, or having said that rather, the reading claims Uranus's erratic and explosive traits form a strong connection with the moon. Uh, despite its proclivity to shake things up, all right, as far as other planets are concerned, when Uranus comes in, it electrifies and shakes up the planetary influences, oftentimes for the worse. Uh, but here it said it, it lends strength to the moon. I don't know, maybe for the worse too in that regard, because a lot of people would see a passive tendency or uh, working as a co-worker or a partner rather than a leader as a negative, but... I don't think so in a lot of cases. It's just society kind of defines it as that. Sometimes leadership's not all it's cracked up to be. It's just too much responsibility. So if you flourish in the other area, there's all sorts of positives with that. And I think they mentioned many of them to say you allow other people to uh, expound on their ideas. How many people let that happen in this day and age? I don't know. And then people feel inclusive, right? They feel kind of like, oh, this, in, an this is an individual I can, I can learn to like here if I don't already, right? Uh, so there's a strength there is all I'm trying to say, if you didn't realize that already. Um, but uh, what else do we have here? Uh, difficulty settling down domestically. This is one of the most specific planetary uh, uh, think, power things that's come up. I, I don't know where they get that, but uh, it's the most specific thing I've come across in some time. It's also highly individual. I don't think it's come up before. Uh, again, where they get that, who's to say how that's dictated by the stars, but there it is. Maybe it applies to you in no certain order. 
Now, whether that's good news or bad news, uh, I don't know. I suppose you may have to sit on the fence a while to figure that out for yourself. That's right. But hey, we got that going for us, don't we? Before we drill down on something concrete. All right. That's been your numbers and planets. Again, a little bit uh, disjointed there. Hey, maybe it's one of those days for me. So that being said, let's move on to your tarot. Let's try to pick it back up here. All right. The second card of the major arcana is the priestess, shown seated on her throne, calm and impenetrable. She is a spiritual woman who reveals hidden forces and secrets and empowers those who heed her with that knowledge. Favorable qualities of this card are silence, intuition, reserve, and discretion, with negative values of secretiveness, mistrust, indifference, and inertia. All right. Total copy-paste job here with this one. But you know what? That, ha that happens a lot of times with the tarot, especially if they personalize the numbers and planets to any extent. And they did for you here. Uh, that said, here we go. The priestess uh, for revealing hidden forces and empowering those who heed her knowledge with favorable qualities of, uh, with that knowledge, rather. With favorable qualities of silence, intuition, uh, reserve, and discretion. Uh, but negatives of uh, secretiveness, mistrust, indifference, and inertia. Uh, for yet another apt element, uh, almost informing the breakdown, I would say. I don't know that I picked up on empowering others aspect, but if you work well with others and you endorse harmony and allow consideration of new ideas, you certainly aren't holding those individuals back. All right, so maybe it is in there. Uh, the, the reading... Or, Having said that there, the reading goes on to say, uh, or I, the reading goes on to say, I say that uh, you're said to possess uh, getting mired in indecision or inertia, and you choose indifference to cope. And that sounds particularly applicable here also. Uh, so I would say, yeah, be courageous and keep pressing on through that. You know, inertia being that force that keeps you weighted down, unless you have some other force that pushes you up and gets you going. Maybe more of that fence sitting, I would say, to some extent, so you don't get mired in the inertia. This is another thing that comes up often for uh, moon days because it's the second card. Second card gets repeated uh, a couple times a month. Um, so yeah, we get inertia with quite a few different people. And I would say regardless of that card coming up, that probably affects a lot of folks. But for this particular birthday breakdown kind of individual, I think it speaks to you for sure assuming it applies. Uh, that having been said, again, a little disjointed there, mumble mouthed here. Let's try to pick it back up with the health. That's right, your health. Those born on January 29 may experience all kinds of physical difficulties adjusting to their environment, most notably allergies. And it can help for January 29 people to cut down on mucus producing foods in their diet, notably milk and dairy products. Those born in this day may also suffer from hemorrhoids, apparently, or varicose veins in their legs, which should be treated earlier rather than later, and not necessarily with medication, but with perhaps a change in habits, such as reducing uh, reduction rather in red meat consumption and fewer uninterrupted periods of standing or sitting. Red meat for <laughs> for hemorrhoids or varicose veins? Oh, that's interesting. All right. Regular, moderate, or vigorous physical exercise is highly beneficial to the circulatory system and should be con continued right through middle age into seniority if possible. And as far as diet is concerned, January 29 people should avoid excess consumption of fats and, of course, any foods to which they are allergic. That's right. A little common sense there, all right? Don't eat the things you know you're allergic to. I'm assuming that's what they go, you're going after there. All right. Back to the notes. Let's see how much I mumble this one up here. Let's get it. Uh, let's see. Your notes here for your health. Um, Experience difficulty adjusting to your environment. All right. Allergies and mucus and the like, they said. Uh, mucus is new, at least suffering from it. Uh, you know what? Maybe not new, but it hasn't come up very often. Maybe once or twice uh, and since I started doing these reads. Hemorrhoids are new for this in that respect also. All right. Uh, so, so much for fence-hitting, I would say. Or it makes it rather difficult to do. 
Uh, circulatory issues, however, are an Aquarius body area uh, issue. Lower legs are a concern for Aquarius folks too, particularly the ankles. So uh, uh, perhaps varicose veins kind of factors in in, in that respect. Uh, how, how that's realized outside of risk for stroke, I, uh, I guess varicose veins, right? Though I don't think that's come up before, so there's a new entry for you. How those are treated, I'm not quite sure. I've been talking about compression socks for the uh, avoidance of stroke because stroke and embolism has been coming up. Uh, maybe compression socks help with varicose veins. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think they. Med I don't think medication works for that. Any event. Moving on. Uh, what else do we have here? Where the piles factor in? Uh, there's no telling. Does the moon inspire that? Uranus shaking things up. Maybe Uranus. That's right. All explosive and erratic jokes aside. Again, probably makes sitting on the fence a bit harder there. So there you go. You're going to get off your ass and do a little more standing. Uh, you know, you're not going to be doing less standing if you got the piles going on there. So red meat and dairy, they say to excise from your diet. I don't uh, Dairy for the, um, the mucus, it sounds like. Again, I don't know where that's coming from. Uh, but the uh, red meat, I would assume it's to cut out the cholesterol in your diet. This came up for Capricorn, too, because one of their body areas was the veins. And so for you, circulatory system, very close, I would say. So cut out the cholesterol, maybe. Give your heart a little bit of a break. Now, what else do we have here? Uh, changing in standing and sitting habits. They recommend vigorous exercise uh, for as long as possible. That's a new facet there. They don't tend to bring up uh, stages in your life when you should be carrying through with it. So maybe take note of that. Uh, so this is a highly novel health entry to some extent, even though I've pretty much butchered it there for you. <laughs> it's a, uh, a lot of specificity. So again, maybe take note. But that's been your health, so let's move on to some advice. All right. It says here with your advice, you need to toughen up a bit. And the easiest way is not always the best way. And don't insist that you can do without. Express your wants and expect others to do the same. And how will anyone know if you don't tell them? Question mark there. All right. This was, uh, you know, I, I've been just joining my notes here for you today. This was a rather disjointed piece of advice, I would argue. The advice normally very uh, well regarded or applicable to the day insofar as it's great inf uh, information or advice just in general to that end. Here I would say this was more just good information in general. I don't necessarily see how most of it lined up with your day. So let's get into it and see why. But maybe it applies, maybe you see through it just perfectly. I don't know. So they said toughen up a bit. Uh, you want to rise to the occasion a bit more, I'm guessing. Uh, so make some more decisions maybe. See what the outcome might be regardless of where you, uh, if you want to see those concrete results before you jump off. Maybe just take a little bit of a chance, I'm guessing. Uh, the easiest way is not the best. See, and I'm not quite sure I picked up on this being something for you, uh, unless it's, it speaks to that security that you drill down on instead of going after uh, your happiness more so. Uh, so again, you got to take the gamble if you want to change things up. Um, and I'd say uh, if you do change things up and you find that that thing you're doing is something you don't like and you're like, oh, I regret not doing it. You know what? Just change it up again. It'll be even easier to change it again, I would say, because you just did it. Um, what else here? Uh, if it isn't working for the better, even easier. All right. Don't insist you can do without. Express your wants. I'd say it's understandable, even admirable to go without something sometimes. Uh, but to the point of martyrdom, uh, you know, it seems a bit unnecessary. And I don't know that I really picked up on you doing without. Again, maybe that's just having to read between the lines again. So, you know, it's just things like this where I kind of got to do homework to make it fit. I don't know if it's the best advice just specific to the person. Like I said, it's great advice in general, but usually they pick stuff that's very specific. And if you have to read between the lines, that makes it hard. Uh, getting into things, they said you need to communicate with folks better, all right? Huge for everyone. Again, uh, people aren't mind readers, and that said, a lot of this advice I didn't necessarily pick up on for you being a direct issue. Maybe it's me. Hopefully, it speaks to you hard 100, right? I feel as though it's one of those disjointed advice sections uh, for one of the most interconnected 
uh, birthday readings I've read today. All of the tarot, the numbers and planets, the health, it all seems to speak to the breakdown, interestingly. Not that they don't do a bad job of that just in general, but I thought today was highly interconnected. Uh, but then the advice just kind of in my mind. But like I said, maybe it speaks to you. And uh, they did a perfect job. I don't know. Uh, that having been said, that's your advice. So let's move on to your meditation. That's right. It's your birthday. You get a meditation. All right, here we go. Life itself feels no need to compromise. All right. I don't know what to make of that one. Once more here, life itself feels no need to compromise. Oh, I think I picked up on something there. Interesting. Interest. I like this one for you here. They they reconciled the advice that I didn't think was the greatest. All right. Hey, you know what? That's your meditation, but it's your birthday, so that's just for you. I'm not going to provide what, what I took from it for you there. Uh, it would kind of defeat the purpose now, wouldn't it? That's it. Once more here. Life itself feels no need to compromise. All right, that's your uh, birthday, your meditation. Let's move on to your strengths and your weaknesses. That's right. Let's see where you got the bulk and where you otherwise a little more atrophied, if you like, or don't like more specifically. Your strengths, you're reasonable, you're social, and you're fun-loving. Interesting. I don't know that I necessarily picked up on fun-loving. Uh, not to say it wasn't there. I just, you know, as a strength, Interesting. But your weaknesses, oh, let's hold up that objective mirror, but flip it to the side that blows up your face. Maybe shows off some of the things you're more uh, superficially insecure about in, in one way of speaking there or looking at it. That's right, your weaknesses. All right, you're unsure, you're ambivalent, and you're passive. Oh, these all kind of seem like the same thing, just minor differences there. Uh, that said, hey, I think we picked up on those in the breakdown for sure. But having been said, oftentimes I like to say our weaknesses can also be strengths, all right? It just depends on the situation we find ourselves in. But if, there, if your weaknesses are something that you want to improve upon, I also like to say your strengths are going to help you do so. Uh, reasonable, social, fun-loving. You know, it's interesting they said communication in the advice, but you're social. Uh, yeah, I guess there's our difference. You know, you can be social without communicating anything. Um, I'm sorry, just a little bit of a segue there. Uh, reasonable, I think you're going to be able to figure out uh, where the uh, the deficit is with your weakness, uh, social fun loving, and maybe you can turn it into into a game as to how to improve upon such things. And if you're social, hey, maybe you can ask other people for help if it's something that you feel you need a little bit of assistance with, and without much trouble in doing so. And you know what? If you're fun loving, people are probably going to be like, you've you've come up with a game to help yourself figure out how to improve upon your weaknesses. I got to see what this is. Yeah, of course I'll help you. I don't know. I'm just kind of reaching in the bag to see what comes out. I don't look at these beforehand. Uh, but your weaknesses are strengths. Let's see here. Unsure, ambivalent, passive. You know, for the same reasons that they say they're a negative, they're also a positive. You know, people who jump in on some decision real hastily, you know, they're going to come out maybe not smelling like roses, depending upon what's on the other side of that fence. If you're sitting on the fence looking over, unsure about jumping down, hey, you might just avoid falling in the manure. So I think it's a strength in that regard, too. Uh, but again, we kind of touched on all of this, taking the gamble once in a while. You know, manure washes off, right? You know, but you might just happen into some rose water, although that can be pretty stinky, too, if it's not used in moderation. Uh, that having been said, I think you get the idea. Uh, but uh, you know what? A lot of times I like to say, too, that... Uh, even if we want to get rid of our weaknesses, don't get rid of them altogether, all right? Hold on to a little bit of it because they also make us who we are, all right? We don't want to change that altogether, I would argue. Uh, though some of the darker days, there's a case to be made for doing so. All right, so that's been your strengths and your weaknesses. At, and so let's move on to your uh, those born on this day. And when we get into those born on this day, something I like to do is look at it through the prism of... Uh, figuring out our passions. You know, all too often I get out in the world and I meet individuals who uh, they're doing something that they don't necessarily like. And, you know, I can't necessarily blame them because all too often people get out of school right into a job to make ends meet and then they kind of get caught in that corporate structure, you know, and they get used to it. Hey, it's easy to do. I just roll out of bed, put on the autopilot and punch the clock, right? And then I punch out. At this point, I don't really have to do anything. Other people do all the work. And you know what? 
that's great and all, and you're filling your coffers, you know, having to put in a lot of effort. But at the root of it, it has nothing to do with what you're passionate about or what you even like. Because maybe you haven't put in the time and the work that's necessary to figure those things out, right? And I think we should be chasing after things that we're eager to get after, things we find fulfillment from. And so not only if we look at it, uh, those born on this day with this particular vantage, hey, maybe we can draw some inspiration from as much. Because I think if anything uh, I can wish for you on your birthday, it's that you're chasing after a passion, getting some fulfillment out of life. But at the very least, we get to see who shares your company, and that can be interesting in its own regard as well. So let's get after it. Let's look at it through the prism of getting some inspiration to fuel our inspirational fires there. All right. Our, our fires for a passion. All right. We start off with Thomas Paine, the British-born American revolutionary leader and a political theorist as well as a writer of common sense. We also have Anton Chekhov, a Russian short story writer and a playwright of The Cherry Orchard. He was also... A physician. We also have William McKinley, the U.S. president, imperialist, and a Spanish of uh, the Spanish-American War, and he annexed the Philippines, Puerto Rico, as well as Guam. He was also re-elected and assassinated by an anarchist. Interesting. I don't remember that one. Uh, moving on here, trying to pick the energy back up. W.C. Fields, all right, a comic film actor. We also have Oprah Winfrey, the TV radio talk show host and film actress. We also have Ernst Lub uh, Lubitsch, uh, I'm not quite sure on that one, a film director of screwball comedies to say Trouble in Paradise and Nino Nitschka. Nunichka, perhaps. <laughs> We have Jermaine Greer, a feminist of the a female eunuch fame, uh, probably a book they wrote. Um, also a political antichrist and an atheist. Oh, oh boy. Compassionate combatant. Didn't quite sound like that there. Greg Louganis, the U.S. Olympic four gold medal winning diver, uh, both a platform and springboard. We also have Patty uh, Chayavsky, a New York playwright and screenwriter of network fame. Uh, Romain Roland, a French Nobel Prize winning biographer of Michelangelo fame. We also have Barnett Newman, color field painter. I think that's the first one I've seen of that happen. Uh, Catherine Ross, a film actress. John D. Rockefeller Jr., an heir and philanthropist. Tom Selleck, the film and TV actor of Magnum P.I. fame. We also have uh, Norio Aga, a Sony corporate head. We also have Abdus Salam, a Pakistani Nobel Prize winning physicist and an elementary of elementary particles. We also have Mary Lee Job Ekeli, uh, Ekeli, uh, I guess so, A-K-E-L-E-Y, African explorer and photographer, John Forsyth, a t uh, film and TV actor, Luigi Nono, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's how it's pronounced, just how it's spelled, <laughs> Italian 20th century composer, and Frederic Dulios, uh, British composer. The names today, let me tell you something, they got me <laughs> all over the place today. But hey, we endeavored through, we kept pushing, just like you got the recommendation. But hey, let me butcher uh, some things on my side of things to make up for it. It's not done in malice, it's just hooked on phonics, doesn't often work with me with the names there, as you as you could tell. Uh, that having been said, I know it's a big ass tall order to take inspiration from somebody else's accomplishments. But like I said, maybe you can just put the, the seed or the kernel to grow the tree. Uh, you know what? Then I'd say that's all worth it, all right? Because if we should be chasing after our passions, eager to find something we get fulfillment from all right and maybe we have that in our lives we just don't know how to make it financially viable well hey that takes work and time to figure out as well so maybe i'm stirring up the fires for you to get after that all right get after it all right but if you've done all of that well then the hat i'm not wearing is off to you all right keep going after it all right uh that having been said uh, the those born on this day having been relayed that essentially rounds out your birthday read except to say your season is winter your sign once again is aquarius the Aquarius one period specifically, and your quality and elements is fixed air. That's right. And this has been January 29th, the day of the compassionate combatants from the secret language of birthdays by Gary Goldschneider.
and used elfers. I have an affiliate link for this book down in the description if you're interested in picking up a copy. It makes an excellent coffee table book. is an icebreaker at parties. It'll save you the hassle of having to type it in a browser there if you're interested and it supports the channel and the bargain. I'm telling you what, break this thing out during a party. It's going to get the conversation started for better or for worse, but it's going to get it flowing. And that's how you want to get a party started, right? Uh, that having been said, the uh, the book having been relayed, it's not altogether all too important. You're in the scheme of things. And the scheme of things being, that's right, it's your birthday. So once again, I just want to wish you a happy birthday. My read and my notes aside, that's what's important here. And that's what I hope you take away from as much. Have a happy birthday, all right? But for everybody else who joined us here, I hope you've got some entertainment if you're a return viewer. Me mucking up the copy there. Hey, you know what? It happens sometimes. But we must endeavor through, as you, as the reading said, all right? And uh, I enjoyed it, too. I enjoy finding myself messing things up that I've done so many times before. Sometimes it just doesn't connect. But you know what? We have to press on, as I said. And I hope you got some enjoyment out of it. I know I did. You probably see my, my smile on my face as I got on with the read after doing as much. I hope you took some uh, some entertainment value out of that. All right. So that having been said before, I forget it's daily numbers. All right. You're one and you two for a three. Get out there and let the universe show you it's with you on your path there. Um, like I said, you drum up some synchronicities, stack up some coincidences. You'll understand the uh, magic that can be found in it. All right. And if anything, you take a little bit of solace in knowing that the universe is with you on your path. All right. Uh, so once again, I just want to say happy birthday. I want to thank you for the pleasure of your time. Um, it's been a pleasure and the uh, privilege of sharing your birthday with you. All right. So watch out for them hemorrhoids. If that's a real thing, I don't know. I can't imagine the moon or Uranus has any kind of influence on that. All joking names aside of planets and how that relates to a specific part of the body, notwithstanding. <laughs> so pretty ironic there to that end. Like I said, first time I think it came up. But mind you, the compression socks, yeah? Maybe get yourself a pair out there on your journey if you decide to get your steps in, all right? Prevent them varicose veins early. They look unsightly on folk. That's right. Hey, once again, happy birthday and take care of yourselves, all right?